Number five in this table, this is a very useful table here. Now, suppose the government wants to reduce pollution from 16 units to 8 units and auction off 8 pollution permits to achieve this goal. Now, this is getting much more to the area of what we call cap and trade, in which the government caps the level of pollution and then allows firms to basically bid and trade for these permits. In other words, the firm has to have a permit in order to pollute. If it doesn't have a permit, it can't pollute. All right. So, the government wants to reduce pollution from 16, we've got 16 units here, to 8 units of pollution. So we want to get rid of, essentially, this upper tier here, okay? Now, which of the following would likely be an auction price of pollution, all right? Let's look at it. Now, if it wants to get rid of these 80, these 8 units of pollution, and we're going to put it out to auction, what are firms going to bid? Right? So these firms would never bid anything above $73. All right? In other words, these firms, if the price was above $73, they're going to get rid of the eight units themselves. All right? And if the price is different from that, then the, the market's going to have to figure this out. So let's sell. We've got to get rid of these eight units. So what price will allow the market to basically solve this problem. Look at your choices. So let's take $81 as a, as a possible solution. All right? Well, take, take $69. If the government auctions off these pollution units, puts them out and says, here, bid on it, would $69 achieve the goal? No. Why? Because at $69, we'd only get rid of seven units of pollution. This right here, the firm would say, hey, at $69 for a permit, all right, um, I'll buy the permit and pollute this one. I'll just do it myself, all right? In other words, we're going to go to $81 here because at $81, that price, what is going to happen is it's going to be basically cheaper for these firms to basically have those permits, buy those, get those permits, and, excuse me, to eliminate these themselves and then have these permits left over to go and sell in the market. So it's, it's, it's a slightly complicated kind of deal, but what you're wanting firms to do is to basically bid away, bid for the right to pollute, all right? Essentially, that's what it's going to happen. And they'll keep bidding and bidding and bidding until the price rises to a certain point where it's just below this $82. And why? Because at $81, these firms are all going to get rid of the pollution in the cheapest way possible the lowest cost elimination of pollution. So they won't, they won't be bidding. These firms, to get rid of any of this pollution, will be bidding for the permits. They'll be looking to buy permits because it's going to be cheaper. If the permit's below $82, it'll be cheaper for them to get the permit than to try to do it themselves. So if the price ends up at $81, you're going to see firms buying eight units of pollution, which is the available in the market. They'll get rid of all the stuff right here. Right? We'll get rid of, excuse me, we'll get rid of these eight units and will only be left with eight units of pollution in the market or in the environment, which is really what the government's goal is. So it's called cap and trade because, again, you set a limit of how many permits you allow to go out in the market. You let the market bid and ask for what they want to pay for these permits. And what's going to happen is that the low-cost firms are basically going to eliminate the, their pollution once the price is set at something like $81 because it would be cheaper for them to do it themselves than to pay and buy a permit for $81. So the answer to number five is B, of course. And so we have finished the five problems associated with this table. It's a really nice table. A lot of questions can come from it, likely to see this on an exam, but it does show you how firms respond to the incentive that the government gives them by setting a price on pollution. And that's really the trick. We can solve a lot of global warming issues. We can make great progress on them if we can just basically tax ourselves. If we can tax the production of pollution, that negative externality. Remember at class we called it a Pigovian tax? If you can impose that on the process, firms are very inventive and they're very creative. And they will find ways to save money by basically reducing pollution themselves in a cheaper way than paying this fine or bidding for a pollution permit in a market if that permit gets very expensive. All right, I'll stop there. Let me put together the next, the next diagram here and we'll come right back.